All right. Get rid of that guy. So I'm going to go ahead and, and start the presentation. Um, again, please don't hesitate to ask questions. That's what I'm here for. Uh, that's what I, that's why I started this deal. So, um, if you guys are looking for anything in particular, or if I'm going too fast, too slow, if, if you already know all this stuff, um, feel free to tune out. Uh, I am going to record it and I'm going to post it on YouTube afterwards for, uh, any kind of learning or whatever you guys want to do going forward. But, um, I think with that being said, let's, let's go ahead and, and get rolling. All right. Can you guys, can you guys go ahead and, and see the screen? Is everybody good? Good. Good. All right. Oh, fun stuff. Fun uh, Tuesday afternoon, I think. I don't know. All the days start to run together. Um, but it is an awesome day to be learning about sports code. So just really quickly about me um, and my past, and I guess why I'm, I'm qualified to talk about this is that I, uh, was I was a manager at Colorado uh, where I learned video a little bit and, and kind of got the idea of, of getting into basketball. I started off my career as a, as a uh, volunteer video guy at uh, Weber State. I had a role in the same capacity at Boise State in uh, Idaho over there. And then I actually went to, to huddle and sports code and worked for a little bit. Um, uh, it just learned and, and mastered sports code. It was, it was essentially a support role and a training role. I'll get into that a little bit more as we get on. Uh, but then I, I ultimately left Huddle to, to get back into hoops, as a lot of you guys are right now uh, or are looking to get into. And now I, I work for uh, Travis Ford in St. Louis, and, and things have been good. So um, let's start here. So the first thing I, I wanted to explain is because I'm going to do a series of these, um, and I want people to learn as much as possible, and I'll explain why. So the first thing is if particularly, you know, there's not a lot of big time schools or big time video guys on here. And even if you are, it's really tough to get a sports code training. Um, you know, I, I really was a proponent when I was there of trying to train as many people as possible, but it ends up, you know, there's only so many hours in the day you're dealing with multiple sports. And then all of a sudden, you know, you've 15 calls later and you got to train some hockey team. You don't have time to, to do what you really want to do and, and teach the people that, that you really want to. Um, so that's the biggest thing for me is I wanted to help people learn about sports code and some of the things that I was fortunate enough to learn. Uh, again, it's, a, it's important to hear from somebody in the industry. You know, I, I'm fortunate enough to have been at multiple schools, uh, to have worked at Huddle, and, and I know it's all, it was always tough for me when I was calling into support and, and somebody wasn't uh, completely sure about, um, you know, what sport they were in or what they were asking. You know, I, I, I remember we used to get a lot of calls from, from hockey teams and, and I, I don't know any more about hockey than I know about bocce ball. So, you know, it was tough for me to explain to them how I can help in, in uh, terms of their sport. So I think that's a big thing is why I wanted to do this. Um, and then first and foremost, the biggest reason I wanted to do this is people are never taught properly how to use sports code. Um, uh, just a quick story about me to explain this. I remember, so I, I, I had been at Boise state. I'd been working with sports code. That's why I got the job at sports code or at huddle. And I go in, I, I get training right away. I start taking calls. And, um, one of my coworkers who had been working at huddle for a long time, he, he listened in on one of my calls to try to help me out. And he goes, he looks at me with this just flabbergasted look on his face. And he goes, have you, have you done it? He was talking about broken packages, which we can talk about if you guys want to text me about it. But we were talking about broken packages and he looks at me with just disgust and he goes, have you always done it that way? And I, I kind of looked at him like, yeah, I, I taught myself how to do it. No one's ever taught me how to do any of this stuff. Um, and so he, he walked me through the better way. And in my mind, that's a huge problem. If, if you know, I was considered, a, 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 I was a Mountain West video guy. I was considered one of the good sports code users, but I was doing things completely wrong. And to this day, there are still things that I do wrong. I'll call in and they be, they're going to tell me that that's ridiculous. You shouldn't be doing it that way. It's going to take you more time. Um, and instead of calling into support 15 times a day, I think these sessions are going to help uh, you guys and, and the support team at sports code and uh, everything else like that. So today we're going to talk briefly about the sorter and the organizer. Um, so I'll preface this with, you know, I know some of you guys in here have never really used sports code before. I know some of you guys 
are going to be laughing at how simple some of this stuff is. And then there's going to hopefully be some people in between. Um, I'm going to have my phone number here at the end. I'm going to have a lot of people, you know, try to connect with me. And if there's more that you guys want to learn or, you know, you want to start out with some more basic stuff or you want to get more advanced as I'm going to hope these sessions continue to get more and more advanced, uh, you feel, feel free to contact me because this is just uh, kind of a niche session. And I want to explain to you guys um, some of the tips and tricks that I've learned for somebody that's maybe a, a novice to a moderate sports code user. Um, so if you have questions along the way about that, feel free to stop. So sorter versus organizer. In my mind, the difference between the sorter and the organizer is data versus presentation. Um, for those of you that are on a pro license, I don't know if anybody in particular, you know, if, if you're at a smaller college, you may be on uh, a pro license, but your only choice is the organizer. Uh, and believe it or not, I was on, an, on a pro license back in the day, and that's how I learned. Uh, and in my mind, there's a lot of use for the organizer. And in a lot of ways, it's better than the sorter. And I think it's a good thing that that's what you get first. Um, but I'll explain in more detail as we kind of get on what I mean by data versus presentation here. So the biggest uses for the organizer in my point of view. Now, I don't think there are any NBA guys on the call right now. I might be wrong about that. But a lot of them are going to disagree with what I'm about to say. I think that the organizer is better for scouts, you know, putting clips with slides, everything that you need to do, you know, playbooks. And I think it's better for your assistant and for your, all your coaches, assistant, head coaches, it doesn't matter. The biggest reason for that is the interface and anybody that's used both of them can tell you the interface for the organizer is easier. And it's easier to see the number of clips you have. It's easier to see um, how long the clips are, how many rows and things along that line. And I've tried to expose coaches to both the sorter. You know, when I came to St. Louis, um, we, we actually switched from sports or from exos to sports code. And so I had to figure out what are these coaches going to prefer? And every single one of them preferred the organizer because I gave them the opportunity to show me what they preferred. Um, and the reason I say is the NBA is going to disagree with me. That is, is with my experience at huddle, we, we get, a lot of calls from NBA teams because every NBA team, uh, except for the Mavericks, I could have done a trivia question there, but every NBA team except for the Mavericks uses sports code. And you're getting calls day in and day out, and every single one in the NBA is about the sorter. That's fine. And like most NBA video guys are sorter heavy because that's what they've learned. Uh, but I think it's really important to incorporate both, and, and that's going to help you get things done in, in as quickly and in, in expeditious a manner as possible. I think the benefits of the organizer is I kind of touched on, um, you know, the ability to see the number of clips is, is way easier. I think when you have a sorter, as, as you guys may, be, may or may not be familiar with, you're scrolling down, you can see the number, but it's, it's tough to, to quantify quickly how many clips you really have. Um, again, the clips are organized by rows, and I'll touch a little bit. It does have the row name in the sorter, but it, it just is not nearly as clean. And it's simpler to make presentations. You know, I've, I've had, I've tried to make presentations in the sorter. Um, I don't think I'm organized enough to know uh, when everything needs to go in the sorter, you know, get everything together. And, and I, I hear that a lot, you know, with people that are trying to use the sorter. So um, uh, tips and tricks, just a couple things for guys that use the organizer a lot. Um, I'll talk about the hotkeys, uh, moving clips from organizer to organizer changing the overlay text and other basic settings that, that I didn't know until I started to work in sports code. And then, you know, in general, the hotkeys. Uh, and then I'll touch on huddle sports code. So I don't know how many of you guys are uh, using V11, how many of you guys aren't, don't use sports code yet at all, or how many of you guys are, are now trying to use the, the new version. But I hope this can be a good, a good segue and a good introduction into um, the huddle sports code interface. So I'll get started here with a little bit of a uh, – um demonstration if you guys are, are ready to go do we i mean do we have any questions before i i kind of get rolling all right i guess i'm doing amazing so far um so i'll open up this package really quickly and i'm gonna just send a couple of these clips to the organizer can everybody see that all right just some nods or anything okay cool so in terms of the organizer these are just some some clemson sets from from a project from months ago. Um, so when you send all these clips to the organizer, um, 
they're going to show up in a much simpler and more organized fashion, in my opinion. So as you can see, you know, you have the row name, you have everything sorted by rows, okay? You know what's going where, and it's, you can see which clips have data. Um, this is Synergy data. So for anyone that's used the Synergy import, um, it's a great feature, and it's something that, you know, if you guys want to talk about more, I can show you um, why I use it and, and why it's, it's great. Um, but it's a lot of data. So if you go in and you, you can right click and you can see all of the synergy data in these instances, in these, each of these clips. Um, but as you can see, it's a lot. And there's a lot of stuff that you may not use, like the fact that the period says null. You know, that, that's pretty irrelevant. And so one of the, the tricks that I use for my coaches, because whether it's synergy data or whether it's stuff that myself, managers, or the GAs are clipping, there's a lot of data. Uh, and it, cause it's important for our coaches to know, and, and I'll, you know, get into this a little bit more with the sorter, but you can actually take all this data off and just be able to see the notes. So what you can do and, and, uh, just the quick tip about it is there's a feature on sports code. So let me move this out of the way. There's a feature on sports code that allows you to strip the instance contents. And so you click on the clip, you go into edit and you strip the instance contents. And now you can see the clip is blank. And what's great about this now is, so let's say I select all of them, command A for anybody wondering, I actually get that question more than you'd uh, think, but, and you can strip all these instant, instance contents. And I actually did this a lot when I was at Boise State because now the coaches wanna go in and they wanna see their notes. So, you know, if I, if I type in test right here, now they can see all their notes and they can organize their clips based on their notes, hence organizer. But a lot of coaches, you know, they're gonna wanna, spread this thing out if it's going to work for me spread this thing out as wide as it can go see the clips a little bit better see how long they are see which are the longest clips if they want to trim them down um and i in my opinion that's one of the best ways to use the organizer um let's see here oh i talked about so the, another issue right here is is going from organizer to organizer the first thing i'll say about this is i don't uh, entirely recommend it. I think going from organizer to organizer can get tricky because as anyone that has used the organizer before in sports code version 11, the old version, you can lose the package and lose your organizers really quickly. But I do think it helps coaches get organized. And if they're doing it properly, and if they have a good enough video guy to tell them what they're doing, it's no problem at all. So say in particular, I, you know, I have a new uh, movie organizer. I got a second one right here and I wanted to get all of these John Newman clips into another organizer for whatever reason. I can hold alt and command and I can drag all of these clips down to that organizer below. It keeps them in the original one. So if I wanted to take those out, I could, I could delete the row, but then I've got these in another organizer. So it allows me to keep separate organizers for whatever projects, you know, coaches are all over the map. They got a million different things to do with. If you can keep them organized. That's a, that's a huge plus in my book. Um, let's see here. One other thing I wanted to show you guys that was important about the classic organizer is changing your preferences. Uh, the first thing, well, first of all, let's see where my preferences are. So you go up to the sports code letters, you go to preferences, and then you can see all of the different options that you have. Um, I didn't know anything about this until I came to sports code. Some of you might be laughing at me underneath your breath, but it's true. Uh, I went, uh, into this and I figured out that coach is only going to want to see his instance notes, you know, what he's saying or what he wants to say. So when I go in there, I type that note and no matter what kind of data I have on there. So let's say I go back to this original data, no matter what kind of data I have on here, I type test again. When I go to watch these clips and I click down on overlay text, which in my opinion, is the only one you should ever click down on unless you're adding titles. But when I click on this, now it's just going to show me that test in the background. But if I were to go change that, those settings to everything, it's going to show me the code, the labels, the background. It's going to have that opacity. Now I can see all of that synergy data. And it's pretty distracting and it's pretty unnecessary. So what's important to notice is that there's a 
really a couple different ways of doing the exact same thing, but uh, it's just a matter of coach's preference. You know, what I try to do is present them with as many options as possible and then allow them to, uh, you know, figure it out for what they want. They always love to know uh, that, that they're in control and sports code's great for, for allowing them to do that. Um, do you have any questions about what I've said so far? I love it. I love it. You guys are just making me feel so good. Um, so the last thing I want to say, and this is a big trick, I don't know how relevant it's going to be in huddle sports code. Um, but I, I do want to, to bring it up briefly. So, uh, in terms of putting slides into presentations, the classic way to do it is to add a picture here, export the slides as a JPEG and PowerPoint, copy and paste it. And then, you know, you may, you run into all these issues. I'll be honest with you. I hated it. I've always hated it. And it, I, I needed a way to avoid that because for anyone that's used sports code, you know, that it presents a lot of other issues when you're dealing with those presentations, because the organizer just frames that information. It doesn't actually carry the information with it. And so you got to make sure that your slides and your packages and and all your, all your clips are in the right place. And I was really sick of that because you can't database a slide with a presentation with slides in it unless you use this trick. So um, what I'll go in and uh, do for you guys really quick is show you how I go about that process. So I'm gonna go in, get a, a new little uh, sports code, or I'm sorry, a new PowerPoint presentation. So I'll use, these are the slides that we use for film sessions um, right here, roll bills, but then, what we do, what I do is uh, I export these slides as MOVs. So normally what sports code will tell you and what they'll recommend for you to do is say you have these film session slides, you're going to export them to your desktop and they'll say export them as JPEGs. And so you have separate images that you can copy and paste into your organizer. I, I don't do that. I hate that. <laughs> I've always hated that. And I think it's such a process and coach always wants these crisp, clean slides. You know, I mean, as you can see, this was just for a post game film session. I mean, this was nothing crazy and coach really wants it to look good as he should, you know, because he's worked hard to be where he's at. He should have a good looking presentation. So the thing to do here is I actually export these as an MOV. Uh, I usually for a while, I, I stuck it with uh, internet quality because it's faster uh, for all intents and purposes. We'll leave it uh, at that for this presentation. I switched to presentation quality throughout the year because uh, when you'd go into um, personnel slides, it's just really important for our guys to be able to read the, uh, the text really simply. So now that you export that, hopefully this won't take too long unless we got, oh, that was way more slides than I thought were in this. Must have made some changes throughout the year. But we'll export this. And then what you go ahead and do once it's finished, sorry, bad preparation on my part. So once that's finished is now that's going to be on my, can you guys see my desktop? Okay. So now that this is on my desktop, it's as an MOV and you can go ahead, you can just link a timeline to this, or you can create a new movie package. I always create a new movie package. It's just, it's better. And that's a, if you guys want to ask me about that, we can talk about that, but there are guys, there are a lot of video guys out there that just, will link timelines to videos. And I've seen a lot of issues with that. And I've seen a lot, I've gotten a lot of calls about that. So I, I would recommend doing it this way. So sorry, I, I got in the habit of using the hotkeys. It's command T or you go down to file new movie package. You throw that in there. I'm gonna decrease the quality. So this takes a less time. Um, another piece of information, uh, if you guys are wondering as far as what this looks like. You can move it into the package without transcoding. I would say 99, 999 times out of a thousand, don't do that. Um, if you're in an absolute panic, which don't get me wrong, I have been, you can do that because it's almost instantaneous, but it's going to run, you're going to run into further issues down the road. So anyway, you click into copy package and transcode. You can either click, there are really only two options here, and this is going to be a non-issue in Huddle Sports Code, but you can either click um, 1080 by uh, 2997 or 720 by 5994. Um, there are reasons for that. I don't really understand or know why, but that's just what I was told to do. So that's what I do. 
you go in, you create the slides. Hopefully this doesn't take too long. So we'll, we'll all just vamp for the next 30 seconds. Um, hope everyone's doing well in quarantine. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> um, yeah, good stuff. The other thing I'll say about, you know, while things are exporting and while things are moving, it, it decreases the performance of your computer. Um, and you can actually elongate the time of, so like the fact that we're running a Zoom presentation right now is gonna make this take longer. Uh, I always, if there's something important, I always try to quit out of it and then it, you know, try to run that as much as I can. Video guys will tell you sometimes that's impossible and sometimes it doesn't happen, but that's all right. Uh, so now this package is done. And so now you can see the nice clean slides of everything that we were looking at. And so if you wanted to go in, create a code window really quickly and just clip these up, the different slides. And now I can take these in to my little organizer from before, send these to the organizer. And now I have my slides in here. And here's what's great about this is, I'm gonna delete some of these for sake of time, is now I can database this whole thing. And I can have a presentation with personnel slides, with title slides, with whatever coach wants, whatever he dreams, right on his computer so he doesn't have to worry about whether or not the organizer is going to get linked or whether the slides are going to be missing. So as a video guy, it also helps you because you don't have to put seven different things on your coach's computer. You put this one package and it's all pieced together. Um, and it works well with coaches huddle remote. Um, if anybody has questions about the huddle remote, I would love to talk to you about it later. Um, Cause it's, it's one of my, uh, one of my bugaboos. We'll say that to quote step brothers. Um, so uh, any questions about the uh, version 11 of the organizer or anything that I just showed you guys? All right. Um, so now I'm going to go in a little bit to huddle sports code and show you guys what it looks like. Um, these are some sets from these. This is more synergy data. So you guys can kind of see. Um, if anybody hasn't used the organizer in Huddle Sports Code yet, I think this is a good little introduction. So you go right here, same idea, send these guys to the organizer. Um, oh, I didn't want to talk about this right away, but I guess now that it showed up that way, I have to. So Sports Code just updated this feature in Huddle Sports Code where you can change the view of the data. So now it's going to look more like the, you know, what you're used to. I guess, uh, in terms of the timeline view. I haven't found a use for this yet. Um, if anybody does, or if, you know, if a coach prefers that, if anybody sees that, let me know. Um, but in my opinion, it seems like one of those things that's just kind of in there to be in there. Um, so getting into the organizer. So now, as you can see, you know, this is very similar data. This is Synergy data, just plays from, uh, you know, a team overseas, Maccabi Tel Aviv. And you can see all the data now. And it's, it's just cleaner. Uh, the first thing that you'll notice is you can see the video. Instead of having clip on, click on the clip and having to uh, wait for it to load every single time, you can click through the clips really easily. And I, I've always liked that interface. Um, we actually used Huddle Sports Code exclusively this year. And it was, you know, it was in its beta stages, so it was frustrating at times. But I do think for the most part, um, it is better for reasons like this. It is still missing a few features, which if you guys want to talk to me about that, you know, as far as databasing from a, from an organizer, which I think is really, really important, uh, feel free to contact me with questions about that. But the biggest difference I'll say um, between the, the organizer, you know, if you were to say, obviously you can see the video, but the other biggest difference is synchronizing data back to the timeline. I wouldn't recommend necessarily doing this with Synergy data because as you can see, they put a lot of stuff in there. And it's also um, very, it gets messy and it's tough to know their exact formula. And then all of a sudden you're mixing with all these different labels and all these different um, you know, groups. But the one great thing about synchronizing back to the timeline is when you write a note in here now, you wanted to say, so let's say, let's think of something other than chest or chest, test. Um, let's just say uh, example. Wow, that's hilarious. That's so much better. But so you synchronize that back to the timeline. And so now if you guys go back, we see that first clip of Jalen Reynolds. You can see that there's a note that says example. So that's the great part about synchronizing with the organizers. It functions like the sorter did in, in uh, regular sports code, 
but it allows you to do some of those features. This works, like I said, with labels, but I'll, I'll get more into that with some of our data and some of the stuff we've clipped up because Synergy gets um, really messy with it. Do um, you guys have any questions on that? Cool. Um, let's see here. Writing notes. Okay, so two other things that I wanted to touch on uh, is drawing on clips and adding little text bubbles is much, much better in Huddle Sports Code. So if you wanted to draw on a play here, so let's get rid of the volume and, and you wanted to see this really quickly. So let's say, you know, th this you say, the coach, this was a great hedge. So if you wanted to go in and, and circle that, um, you know, Phil, no fill. So now when you go back to see the presentation and the organizer, that's just going to save. You can change the settings on it. You can do a lot of different stuff. You can draw around with just that. Like if you'd rather do that circle, even though that looks horrendous, you can do that as well. Um, drawing in, in, in uh, version 11, the older version of sports code is it was such a pain that I'm not even going to cover it right now. I still don't think it's worth it. You're better off putting it into iMovie or something. Um, but I think this is a, a great process now. If you guys, if your coaches like having things drawn on there, um, you know, you can manipulate the shapes wherever you want. You can have arrows, you know, s same as any other interface you use for this. The other great thing is about uh, writing text at the top. So you say, you know, great hedge. Jeez. And so now it's just easier for coaches to, to place this stuff on that. You can barely see that, but you guys get the idea. Uh, the other th thing that's, great and and may or may not i'm still deciding if, if i'm going to make my slides the same way um that i showed you guys before in, in huddle sports code i did this past year because this feature wasn't available yet um but adding slides is actually a lot better so first of all when you add a slide here it's this little button down there it's the same idea where you where you copy and paste and um put the slides right there, but you can also quickly do, you know, some auto generated slides, which is a feature that Exos and some others had had before um, that, that sports code now has. So now instead of me having to go in, if coach just wants a slide for something that says, you know, great offensive plays, I don't have to go in and do it in PowerPoint. I can do it here really quickly. Um, it's really nice. And so now as you go in and you watch the presentation just really quickly says so slide one, and then it goes right into there. Um, I think that's another great feature about it. Uh, if you guys uh, agree or disagree, you're entitled to your opinion, but I think it's awesome. The other thing, uh, and that is sports codes pushing a lot, and uh, I, I think it's a great, great feature. It, it's caused some frustration uh, amongst my staff because of the use of the huddle remote, um, and, and I voice my concerns to sports code about this, but um, you can save packages as a standalone. And so now I haven't saved this package yet. So when you save a package, you're given the opportunity to click if you want a reference or a standalone. For anyone that's new, and I've said this as when I was at Huddle, when I was at Boise, standalone is the way to go. Because when you have a reference, as you guys may or may not know, you have to keep that linked with the other package. And so when you're saving this as a standalone, this is a package by itself. So for any of you guys, like I said, that have used the organizer before, this is a new feature that allows you to put this directly on a coach's computer. So that's why I said this may or may not eliminate the need to make slides the way that I had done it before. Um, it's, just, it's just a matter of uh, how is this going to work going forward. Um, and again, I'll, I'll say it once, I've said it once, I'll say it again. The only reason that's stopping me from using Huddle Sports Go to its full capacity is the huddle remote. Um, and, and if anybody wants to talk again, I'll say it a hundred times more in this presentation. I'd love to. Um, even if it's, you know, just a, a, a smashing session. But do we have any questions about that, about the huddle sports code and the organizer here? All right. Get on right here. So now I want to talk to you guys really briefly about the the sorter and this is where you know the presentation in my opinion kind of gets good uh the sorter is going to let's see here uh it's going to be different and it's going to be new for a lot of people that haven't used the 
or have used the organizer exclusively or have used the sorter exclusively. I think really a lot of people fall into one or two groups. You know, they, they know how to use one and, and not the other or vice versa. But what's really important, especially for people that have only been on pro licenses before, is the importance of incorporating the sorter into your, your work and your daily uh, grind is important. For anyone that has NBA, G League, uh, you know, high uh, Division I aspirations, they're very heavy use in the sorter. Um, like I've said, I, don't, I only agree with that to some degree, but it is very important and it's extremely useful. So for anybody that's wanting to get in uh, at, at the highest level as a video guy, this is one of the important things that it's going to be to learn. So the biggest uses for the sorter, in my opinion, are uh, changing groups and labels. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, viewing all the data in a set of instances. So you'll see when you put some of that synergy data in there, it's a lot easier to go in and see who the pick and roll ball handler was, who the roller was, and then uh, organizing that data in, in an expeditious manner as possible. And then changing row names. Uh, and I'll explain in more in detail about that in a second. Uh, the benefits of the sorter is the grid view. So I, I like I said, I transitioned uh, St. Louis from Exos to Sports Code, and they were accustomed to the grid view. And so I thought the sorter would be the way to go for them because it was more of what they were used to. Um, and it wasn't. They, they all preferred the organizer, but I gave them the option, and they liked that. Uh, the other thing is the ability to sort, i.e. sorter. I know it's just a great cheesy joke there, but – uh, it's better for viewing the information. And that's kind of what I said previously about, about um, all the data. Uh, tips and tricks. So I'll go in and show you guys how to change the row names and change the information in a database, changing large amounts of data, and then some of the hotkeys that go along with that. Um, and then I'll go into Huddle Sports Code. I'll explain to you guys some of the differences, um, saving it as a standalone, what may or may not be changing to it, and some of the workarounds that I've found because I use the uh, sorter a ton this year in huddle sports code um and i saw a lot of flaws but also a lot of great things um that that it uh it can do for us so whoops so now we'll go in here so i'm going to talk about um the original sorter actually you know what let's open up this one too Don't you guys love when things work the way they're supposed to? That's my favorite. Well, if you ever run into this issue, if you use Dropbox and you use sports code, it's important to know the force quit feature. This wants to open up for me now. Awesome. Boy, that would have been a disaster. Um, so going in and I'm going to use these same clips that we used for the organizer before and throw some of these guys in the sorter to give you an idea of, of what the difference is. So now, as you guys can see, it's just, it's a different look, obviously. Um, it is very cut and dry. I, I, it's not super colorful or interesting. Uh, the first thing I do when I put synergy data in the organizer is I delete the breakdown column because it, uh, I mean, as you can see, it's so much and it just makes the whole thing harder to read. Uh, but right here, uh, this is all the data. So if I wanted to go in and I wanted to see John Newman, I wanted to see the cutter, the off-screen direction, the shot type, anything along those lines, I can see it really quickly. So before I even watch this clip on John Newman, I know which ones are gonna be, okay, this is a three-point make. Okay, he came from the shooter's left, it was a flare then I know, okay, that was the set that I was looking for. Um, that's one of the great benefits of the uh, sorter. And now if I wanted to go in and I wanted to say, okay, show me all of the clips uh, that, that were flares, show me all the ones that were, that were curls. Um, I can go in and I can sort these ascending and it's gonna show me curl, flare, straight, straight. It's gonna be in alphabetical order. The ones that are blank are gonna fall, fall to the bottom. Um, you could do that for any of these if you wanted to do it for the row name as well. If it was just easier for you to um, go in and see the John Newman. Okay, I got that. Now I know that he's, he's the one at the top. Um, you can also sort by frequency. Uh, the biggest thing with this is 
I'll explain how I use this a lot in, in my process, um, but it just shows you which ones were the least run or which ones were the, no, the um, most run. So if, for example, I'm showing coach these plays and I wanna show him who are they running their plays for the most for really quickly, I can go in, organize this, and it looks like Alex Hemingway, oh, they ran five of these plays for him. Um, and then it goes down. And that, it's really easy to just quantify information as quickly as you can. Um, as I kind of get these sessions going and get more into output reports and, and shot charts and things a little bit more detailed that are manipulated, you'll see how this information all starts to, to make sense and come together. But the sorter is a really good and basic way to, to understand it. Um, the other thing that I'll say in, in terms of uh, just looking at the sorter is it's really great to uh, go in and manipulate all these groups if you have the ability to. You can't do this in Huddle Sports Code, but if I wanted to, just a great example of something that happened to me, uh, if you wanted to change results to results with an S, I made that mistake because the way we had cut it, it said results, and the way they had cut it, it said results. So I changed it to a capital S in that group, and then I, I synchronized it back just like you would. So like we talked about with the organizer before, you synchronize it back, and now all, I got to select all of them, but now the results are in the, the what we cut, and the results on Synergy are going to match. Um, those are really nice things about the organizer. Oh, I'm sorry, about the sorter. I get them confused. Uh, so now in terms of synchronizing things back to the timeline, one of the, the easiest ways to see this, and let's see if I can make this a little bit smaller, is to uh, change the row names. So the example that I was thinking of is, you know, I'm, I'm showing coach these plays and to be really frank, he doesn't care who Alex Hemingway is, you know, unless we're playing Clemson and he's going to want to see, okay, what position is he? So let's say he's a wing. Um, I, I can't remember if that's true or not, but let's say he's a wing. So I wanted to go in and I wanted to change all these and synchronize it back to the timeline. So now I have a row down here that says wings and that's easy for coach. One of the things that you might say is, well, why wouldn't you just select all these together and create a new merged row? Um, you can, and I think that's a great way of doing it. But the one benefit that this has is you can go in, you can see the data more uh, clearly. You can hit hold down command and you can copy and paste as many of these as you want. And so now you know exactly what you're copy and pasting, you know exactly who it's going over and it just makes sure that things are more accurate. So now, as I'm selecting all of these clips, go back to the timeline, and now we have all the wing clips down here. And Coach can click on that row, and he can see which one he wants to see. Um, the other thing that, that I love that's better than doing this as a merge row is, let's say Coach wants to see the rows, and he only wants to see them by play results. He wants to see all the ones where they made twos and all the ones where they made threes. So what you can do is you can hold down Shift, Scroll all the way to the top, click on these, if it's going to work for me, copy it, and then paste these into the row column. 52. And now, if I select all these clips, synchronize it back to the timeline, now all coach is going to see are the ones where there are a made two and a made three. Um, that's a trick just to keep things simple and try to do them uh, as quickly as you can to get them back to coach. Um, do you guys have any questions on that? Somebody will ask a question at some point. I'm just biding my time. Um, so going into uh, kind of the rest of, of the version 11 sorter, I think that's all. I think that's all I had for, for the version 11 sorter. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to try to open this up. Okay. So uh, this is a sports code package from uh, Huddle Sports Code. For anyone that uh, has been using Huddle Sports Code for a while, um, the, the features in the sorter are, are great, but it's similar to the organizer in that certain things are still missing. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and just explain to you guys really quickly how, how we um, use the sorter here at St. Louis and hopefully you guys can take something from it. Um, so the 
first thing you'll notice is similar to the organizer is now you have that screen up there. Okay, but all the data is still in that grid format that we know and love. You can still synchronize things back to the timeline. If you wanted to type in an instant note here, type in a flag, um, add new labels, ungrouped labels, you can do all that. You cannot change groups yet. Um, and you can't manipulate the data that way. I, I really, really um, hope they change that. I've had a lot of conversations about it. I think that was one of the best features. As you guys can tell yourselves, I use that a lot. Uh, and so I really hope that changes. Um, but, uh, but as you can see, you know, you go in same idea as, as the organizer. One of the other great things about now this new Huddle Sports Code is you can, instead of having to database a, an organizer or a sorter to put it in an organizer, you can go straight from organizer to sorter. So if I wanted to take these three clips, whoa, take these three clips and put them into an organizer, it's really simple. So now they're in that deal and you can see all of our data. Uh, diving in a little bit more, uh, whoops, just to show you guys um, how we use this. So as a, if, if this were a blank canvas, you know, I, have, I have managers cutting the game offense, defense, and then play results. And then they do, you know, different managers do different things for me. But for the most part, offense, defense, and play results. Uh, I take every single one of these clips. So as you can see, this is uh, it's from the last three games of the team. And I give the type of ball screens and then the play call. Um, I took out St. Bonaventure's actual play calls for the risk of like Mark Schmidt calling me, you know, having me put out a hit on um but the idea is that when they run these sets i every play they run i'm going to put in the ball screen i'm going to put in the play call and then i'm going to synchronize it back to the timeline and so now when the coaches are going to go through and they're going to watch these games i can you know i i use output reports for the most part but they can go into the matrix and they can go in and see okay you know these are all the times that um you know they ran this play that they ran this play and this, these are how many times they scored off of it. They can manipulate that data. They can swap the access. Um, different assistant coaches have different levels of understanding and that's always going to be the case. Um, so some of them, you know, they'll use the output reports I create. Some of them are just going to watch the offensive clips. Some of them are going to go into the matrix and look for certain plays. It just depends, but it's important for me to have everything prepared because you never know what's going to come up. Um, but to give you guys an example, and I'll use this one play, and I can't stress this enough, this is not their play call. If anybody else in the A-10 is on here, this is not what they call it. But um, you go in, and so I see this is what we would call a butt screen. And then they get into a floppy set. All right, and then they don't score. I don't think they score off this play. Yeah. Um, and so now I would go in, I'd type in butt screen. I would type in floppy regular and floppy series. So one of the things that, one of the questions I get all the time is like, why do you have two separate labels in there? Like, why can't you just call it floppy regular um, or whatever the play call might be? But uh, I call it floppy regular and, and I use it in a series because I want coach to be able to see both of those things. So I, I, we'll get into this at some point, but you know, we, I show coach the number of times they ran a play and then also the number of times they ran a series. And this allows me to work that in that output report a little bit better um, as far as counting everything. But uh, that's how we use it. I'll do that for every single play um, and then organize the information and then get it to coach. Um, other similarities between it is you can still sort ascending and I mentioned before that I use uh, the frequency. Sorry, David, can I interrupt you real quick with a question? Absolutely. Uh, Menelik Fernandez, Fleming College in Canada. Thanks for doing this, really appreciate. My question is, when you were doing that with the play calls, I'm sure at this point you've seen a ton of basketball and everything seems repetitive. But when you were just starting out and you didn't know, how important or not important was it to not know what the type of action was called or what the actual play call was um that's a great question um i always am open to more basketball related stuff as opposed to just sports code but uh the it's funny that you bring that up because i actually got myself into hot water when i was at boise state and i was calling something slice because i was confused as to what that I, I didn't know that an Iverson cut and a slice were the same thing. 
And so I was calling one thing Iverson and then something else slice and the coach, the scout coach thought that they were the same thing. And, you know, naturally I didn't get yelled at, but definitely reprimanded um, for not knowing the difference. And I think those are the types of things where, you know, starting out as a video coordinator, you're not going to know the names of the actions, but, in reality, nobody knows the names of every action because just for the example that I gave, you know, the difference between an Iverson and a slice is, is not, is really nothing. But then at the same time, you know, I came to St. Louis and, and scout coaches and I were disagreeing on, on what to call certain plays. Um, and that's not about, you know, me knowing less or, or more than anyone else, but it's just the fact that when you come from a different coaching tree or you come from a different coach, you're learning different things. So like there are certain actions where a floppy, like that's why I use that one is it's a pretty general term. You know, people generally understand what you say when you mean floppy or horns. People usually understand that, but there have even been discrepancies on my staff as to, you know, what the difference is between some of these terms. I don't want to get, get into it too much and give away some of our secrets. But um, when you're first starting out as, as you're watching these plays, I would go in and I would ask our scout coach every day, you know, especially for if you're in the summer right now, um, well, we are in the summer right now, but asking your coaches, you know, going through sets, going through plays, going through scouts, asking for them. When I first started at Boise State, you know, I, I asked, I said, hey, can, can I get some scouts? Can I, can I see what you guys did and see what you called everything just so I can get an idea? And you're going to run into road bumps uh, no matter what you do. You're, you're going to call something the wrong name. I still, to this day, I mean, I just remember this scout in particular, I, we got in a disagreement about calling things differently and it's just bound to happen. But um, the best thing you can do is put in the effort and realize that, you know, as a video guy or with many of us, the goal is to ultimately become a coach and, and learn this stuff. And this is a great way to do it. As a video guy, you're allowed to make these mistakes. Um, you know, you're not allowed to let it crash during a film session, but if you mislabel the play on accident, coach understands. Um, and for me, St. Louis was a great growing experience because the staff was so intelligent and so, uh, well, well learned in terms of naming things, but that's my long winded answer to, to your question. I hope that kind of covers it. It does. I appreciate it. Just as a fun fact in, in Canada, a lot of people call a slice cut. What is a shuffle cut? So just totally different right there as well like i struggle with a lot of it too i do a lot of zooms with american coaches and like a lot of the terminology that american coaches use i'm like wow we don't call that that at all so like you got to piece it together in your mind so i i understand where you're coming from totally but so i mean if you don't have correct names and whatever it's not sort of the end of the world basically is what you're saying just get better nah, at it right. not at all the only thing that i i learned was keeping it consistent you know, you may like I, I when I first started at Boise State, I was calling things like inanimate objects or animals, you know, like a play, a set would be lion or a play it would be circle just because in my mind, I wanted to keep it the same. Um, you learn as time goes on and things change at, at different staffs. I think St. Louis, they wanted more detailed play answers. But at Boise, it was just a matter of keeping everything the same, and making sure that everything is consistent. Um, so like I said, you can call a play bear or lion. It, it, that may not be their play call, but it just helps in your mind. Like this sounds really stupid, but I, I, I called the play snake because it looked like they were like, they coiled a snake. Like that's, I mean, that's, that was my level of understanding, but it, I mean, it got me here. You know, I, I faked my way through it to, to however long I, I needed to understand because, you know, even as a manager, as a high school player, as an AAU player, everyone's got a different way and it's, you're never going to be able to figure it out right away. Um, and, and the worst thing you can do, I guess, in, in my opinion is, is say a slice or a term that's generally understood as the wrong thing, because then your coaches are going to get confused and then they're going to get mad, but they're not mad at you. They're mad at something else, but it comes up, they're mad at you and it happens all the time. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, awesome. Any, any other questions in regards to that or. Awesome. Um, so now uh, I talked about, uh, what was it? oh, the frequency. So getting here, uh, coach wants to know what play they ran the most, right? So I go in and I, I sort the frequency of these. Oops, gosh, I did it again. I sort the frequency of these. And so then I can see, 
how often they ran each play. So what I'm going to do here is now I'm going to grab. Hey, D all hey of Dave, Dave. Yes. So I have a question for you. So one of the things that we're looking at maybe doing this year with um, our manager staff and some, some of those guys are on there. Can you just show them um, maybe in 11 or even this, how to label a clip and oh, yeah. like what it looks like in the matrix, just so they can have an idea of, you know, what that looks like. Like if, cause you know, our guys do the OD and maybe adding something this year where it's just like Loyola score or like St. Louis score, like whatever it is. Yeah. Um, you just walk at, at some, obviously I know you're going over something similar with the play calls. I just wanted to see if you could, you know, touch on that at some point. Oh yeah. Um, I'll just show you guys real quick for, for anybody that was wondering um, when you sort this based on frequency, it just allows me to see which play they're running the most, which play they're, they're running the least. Um, Patrick, that's a, that's a great question. Um, the first thing that I'll say is um, with the sorter, all of these are labels. Um, I happen to know that at, at Loyola, you guys have elite, so you can do this. So if, you know, you guys were to clip a game, offense, defense, whatever it is, you could send all those clips to the sorter and just have a group that says score or whatever it is. And that's one way to, to make a label. Um, Patrick, who uh, I, I'm assuming is asking me to kind of talk about the, the simpler way and, and doing it in a code window. And I'll talk about that uh, really quickly here in a second. But the last thing I wanted to say uh, for anybody that's on here for, for, you know, more advanced kind of tips and tricks. The other thing is, you know, I, I brought up that you can't um, use the, you can't manipulate the sorter the same way that you, you can in, in uh, sports code version 11. And one of the workarounds that I found for that was using label mode. And I don't know, and I, I don't want to get too much into this. I don't, I don't know how everyone's, um, you know, understanding is some of you may be just like completely lost. Some of you may, you know, think I'm an idiot for even going over this stuff, but, uh, either way, the best way to go in and add groups and change groups is to create blank label buttons. And I'll use this as a perfect little segue to talk to you guys about what label buttons do. Um, so real quick for anybody wondering or just burning, uh, to see what I'm talking about is. As you can see, I have a little button that says play call. And then I have one that says ball screens and one that says wrinkles. So if I select all these clips and I go into label mode and I click on those three things, it's gonna change those groups when I put them in the sorter. So if you wanted to create one that had a group that said score, like Patrick was talking about, you could do that. Uh, it doesn't matter what, what this button says. I just leave it blank for, uh, really no reason but um now i can have score on there and it's gonna oh did it quit on me it did classic eh, classic sports code not great for their marketing team um so uh oh my code window didn't save either see that always save your code windows if i can get if anybody leaves here with anything anything at all save your code windows god anyway um so you go in here if I wanted to create that. And so now I can, I can talk about um, the score and have those groups in there. So Patrick, um, I think that's good. I think, uh, you know, for everybody in here, uh, I can, I can talk a little bit about, about labels. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a new timeline. Uh, yes, I know it quit. I hate that. Um, so, you know, I call it test. Cause that's like my favorite thing to say. Um, and then, I'll show you guys really quickly what it looks like to create a label. And, and I guess this just kind of turns into code window basics. Um, so here, you know, I've got these label buttons already created for, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to go here and, and just create a new code window from scratch all for you guys. Cause I'm just, I guess I'm nice like that. Um, but right here. So as, as you guys may or may not know, creating a code window, you drive these code buttons in here and, and the generic way to start about it is, you label one offense and one defense. Um, as we get more and more into these discussions, I'm going to talk a lot more about uh, code windows and what they can do. Uh, Patrick uh, will tell you that I have some code windows that look a little bit more complicated than this, uh, but I think the, the basics are really good to start out with. Um, so uh, what I just did right there is create an exclusive link. I don't know if anyone is familiar with that, uh, the hot key, 
the reason I did that is the hot key to do that is um, you, you, you hit control alt and then right drag. Oh, whoops. No, see, I knew I was going to do it. That's why I hesitated. It's uh, control command, right click, and then you can drag those in there. Um, it's really also easy to just go in here and say exclusive link defense. Um, and the links get more and more complicated and more and more important, but that's the idea. So now as we're going in and, and cutting a game offense defense, so I start this, you got an offensive view. Can you guys hear the audio when that plays or is that just me that hears it? That's just me. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't distracting anyone. So now, I mean, this is just the general idea of creating these clips now that have ultimately been put into the sorter. And then, so it's just offense, defense, really basic, okay? But the important thing is, and uh, makes, just saves a ton of time is creating labels with these. So, you know, as you guys saw before, I had had, I had one that said make two points or make three points. So you go in and you can have all these labels to denote what the possessions look like, and you can have them on both offense and defense. Um, and that's, this is exactly what that looks like. Whoops, I had two make three points. But make three points, make two points, whatever it is. And now as these clips are open, your offense, so let's say, let's actually make this accurate. So let's say for the idea of this presentation that Macy Austin made that, you click make two points and then you close out the clip. Whoops, I, oh, I didn't make hotkeys. And now you can go in and see in this matrix that I have offensive clips and defensive clips, but I also have one that says make two points. So you can go in and you can view the clip. You can send whatever selection of those clips to the organizer and sorter directly from the matrix. Um, I don't know, you know, for example, with, with a team like Loyola Chicago, where um, like, like us, where I'm, I'm trying to have the managers cut, but I also want them to learn. Um, I, I give them the option to, you know, I, I had a code window for each guy uh, of what they wanted to uh, cut and what they wanted to learn, whatever they wanted to help me with. And so for us, oh God, I might as well just pull up our, our uh, code window to see what you got, show you guys kind of what it looks like. Uh, do, 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 do. So that is not, wow, that is totally not the one that I was looking for. Sorry about that. So this is what our code window ended up ultimately looking like for um, the A-10 tournament that never happened, or at least the, the first round happened. But um, these, just to give you an example, every single button in here is a label button, except for uh, where it, it says the uh, organization's name. Uh, and just, you know, I, I think, I, I didn't even check, I think uh, the only other uh, A-10 team on here is Richmond. He might have gotten off. So I'm not incriminating anyone right now. But uh, St. Joe's and, and uh, George Mason played each other in the first round. And, you know, if that had changed, I haven't manipulated to where, um, you know, I can, I can rename this button to whatever team that we played throughout the season. So um, sorry, Patrick, we only scrimmaged you, so I didn't have your name on here yet. Um, but I'll, I'll go ahead and throw Richmond in there and then, it, you know, the logo and everything. So our managers, what I try to do with that is, is – obviously try to motivate them like try to make it cool so that they want to do this stuff but then also give them the option the managers can do whatever they want to do within this code window to help me i have i have a manager who you know we're, we're probably going to keep on as a ga who's awesome and he does everything for me he wants to do all this stuff he knows all the different ball screens but then there are certain managers where they're like i just want to help you as fast as i can so i say okay just go offense, defense, and then type in these results right here. Um, it's whatever the guys want to do. So, Patrick, we can talk about this code window a little bit later, but it's just, uh, like I said, a matter of, of what you want your guys to help with. Uh, one of the things that's important to coach is points per possession, and that's why we have, you know, we have to have code and scripts for exactly what that looks like. But this is what our, our uh, code window looked like towards the end of the season. Um, and I'll just go ahead. I'll clip a couple things that'll show you. You have the clip here. If it was a made three, you know, you close out of it. Um, if it was a missed two and then it was a dead ball, you'd click that. 
you know, so on and so forth. And um, that's, that's the idea behind it. Um, it also keeps track of the score because uh, you can't pull the wool over Coach Ford's eyes. You got to make sure everything's accurate. And uh, I created that to help the, the managers make sure that they're doing everything correctly. Um, I know I, I touched that briefly. I'll, I'll do another one on, on creating code windows and, and doing output windows. But does that uh, make sense? Kind of kind of tip of the iceberg type deal for you guys? Awesome. Um, Thanks, David. Yeah, anytime. Um, the last thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is um, – the saving a sorter as a standalone. Uh, again, it's, it's the same exact process. I got to get back to my deal here. So if you uh, wanted to save a certain number of clips as a standalone sorter, you can do that now. Um, and what's great about this is when you save it as a standalone, leave it untitled. I'm not super picky is once this is saved as a standalone, it can still work as a, uh, as a reference. So you can send these clips to the organizer. You can send these clips to another sorter and work from there. So this can be your package. Um, and, and it works the same way with the organizer, whichever you guys prefer. Um, so those are the, the topics that I had that I wanted to cover today. Um, I guess we, I'll show you guys my ugly mug. Um, uh, got my phone number on there. If you guys want to text or call me, reach out to my email. Um, but, uh, that's the gist of what I wanted to get covered today, guys. I hope that, you know, at the very least you, you got some, some tips and tricks out of it. You learned some stuff, but, um, do you guys have any questions as we, as we kind of wrap things up here? 